Hello everyone. My name is Nachiketa and in this video I'm going to be talking about K-fold cross validation. I'm going to be explaining everything you need to know about it. More importantly, I'll be starting with why you need it in the first place. What would go wrong if you were not to use cross validation? And once you understand that, it's going to be very easy to understand the step-by-step -step process involved whenever you want to implement K-fold cross validation. So straight away, let's get started. Question number one that we need to answer is why do we need k-fold cross validation so this is the general model training rule whenever you're training a machine learning model or a deep learning model the objective is that you have a data set and you have to learn a model that can be used to make predictions on unseen data data that your model has not seen before this is the general objective and of course you want to make accurate predictions now let's take an example Let's say this particular plot is of data where on the x-axis you have the size of a house in square feet and on the y-axis you have the house prices in dollars. And now you want to select a machine learning model that can best learn the pattern of this data so that in the future when I give you let's say a random size of a house and I ask you what the price would be, you can give me an accurate estimate. So let's say in this case you have three machine learning models to choose from. Model number two is a straight line. Let's assume it's a linear regression model. And you can see model one and model three are some options which you're considering, which could be, let's say, some polynomial model, which draw a curve to fit the data. And based on that, they'll make future predictions. So whenever you're solving a machine learning problem, whenever you're uh, training a model, you'll have multiple options to choose from. You'll have multiple models and you need to decide, and you need to decide which model would be the best for your problem. So one method to select the best model in this case is to split the data into training and test sets. Now what this approach takes is it reserves some portion of your data set called as a training set and the other portion as a test set. Typically the distribution is around you keep 75 or 80 percent as your training set and the remaining as your test set. The goal is that once you train, for example, in this table, you train your model on the first seven rows. And once you learn a model, you try to make predictions on this test data set. And because you already have the correct outputs, you can see how wrong your model's predictions were. And you can calculate something called as a test error. And you select the model with the lowest test error. So you have three models. Each model will be tested on your test data set. Whichever gives the lower error gets selected. And the hope over here is that the test error that you get will be similar to the error that you will get on future unseen data. However, is this a good assumption to make? The answer is no, because you very conveniently selected a model which performed well on a given test sample, right? Which the model had seen while testing. So let me give you an example to make you understand this. It could happen. That for example, in the first case, we took row number eight, nine, and 10 of the data set and reserved that for testing. And in that case, let's say model one performed the best, it gave you the lowest test error. If you select a different subset of your data set as the testing part, let's say you reserve the first three rows as the test set and you train the model on the other rows. It could happen that some other model, let's say model two performed best. Similarly, if you select some other part of your rows as testing, it could happen that some other model is going to perform best. So in this scenario, how do we choose the best model? And the problem over here is in fact, how do you choose even the testing set? By selecting just three rows, eight, by selecting just row number eight, nine, and 10 as the testing set, you're, you're kind of creating a bias by selecting a model which is able to do good on these three rows. It does not mean that the model has generalized well. To solve this problem, to better select a model, to better partition your data set into training and testing, we use something as k-fold cross validation. And the goal is this, because over here, there was a lot of confusion about which subset of the data should you select as test. And based on that, how do you select the perfect model? What k-fold cross validation suggests is that divide the data set into k-folds. So k can be a number, let's say five or 10. So you divide the data set into 10 folds or 10 subsets and use each of the fold, each of the subset as the testing data for each model and select the model with the lowest average error on all these folds, which is also called as the cross validation. Right, to make this process more clear, let me walk you through an example. 
in the same data set let's consider we had eight rows of data and let's say we're using four fold cross validation which means the data set will be divided into four folds so eight divided by four is two which means each fold will have two rows of data so each of this fold is going to be used as a testing data set at a time so let's say initially you keep the first and second row as a testing set and you train the model on the remaining rows so in this case you will get a test error similarly you train the model by taking uh, the third and fourth as testing set and rest as training so you get another error on the testing set in this scenario similarly one by one you select each of these folds so whenever you reserve so a model as a test set you're going to get a test cross error and cross validation is simply going to take an average of this error across all the folds and this is what we call as the cross validation error in this case you can see the model one cross validation error would be one by four into 60 which gives you 20 as the cross validation error so this process is repeated for all of the models that you're deciding from so for example let's say you run the same experiment for all the models for model one you get a cross validation error of 20 for let's say two you could get 10 and for some other you get let's say 50 but you select the model which gives you the lowest error and it was model two in this case so in this scenario we use cross validation to select between different machine learning models to get the model with the lowest cross validation error you can also use use this for not only comparing different models but also comparing hyperparameters of different models if you don't know what hyperparameter is, it's simply a parameter of the model which you have to decide before training. For example, let's say if you select a k nearest neighbor model, in that you have to decide how many nearest neighbors is the model going to use. So for different machine learning models, you can have different hyperparameters. But the point is, given you have options of let's say n equal to 5, n equals to 10, n equals to 100, you repeat the same cross validation experiment by for different hyperparameters and you select the hyperparameter which gives you the best which gives you the lowest cross validation error so it can be used for model selection and also hyperparameter selection now it's important to note here that the number of experiments required for each model is gonna increase now as compared to our previous approach of simply creating one training set and one test set and training the model on that because if you have m models and you're deciding to use k folds of your data set the number of experiments is going to be m into k so this does require higher time complexity and as you increase the number of folds it's going to require even more time but it is worthwhile because it does give good results by truly selecting the best generalized model on your data set so n is equal to 10 is a default number of folds used in practice but it depends on your data set the number of data points you have as well that was all for this video if you did have any doubts do leave that in the comments and in my upcoming videos i'm going to be showing how to execute the cross validation techniques in python for your machine learning models thank you for watching